Welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. This week, we're going to introduce you to the concept of spectral regions. And we'll start with some basic uh, physics principles. One is that all objects above absolute zero emit radiation. And hotter objects emit more radiation than cooler objects and hotter objects have their peak emittance at shorter wavelengths compared to cooler objects. Example, the sun has a temperature of about 6,000 degrees Kelvin, so its peak emittance is at about 0.5 micrometers. And this is the spectral response curve for the sun. Contrast that to the Earth, which has a temperature of about 288 degrees Kelvin. So its peak emittance is about 10 microns. So the hotter the object, the more energy emitted. And the hotter the object, the shorter the wavelength where the energy is peaking. So it just turns out that for the sun, its peak emittance is in the visible spectral region. So from about 0.4 micrometers to about 0.7 micrometers is the range, range of wavelengths that we can see called the visible spectrum. So related to this, if we're interested in reflective solar radiation, we would use some detector which is sensitive in the visible range of wavelengths or slightly beyond the visible range of wavelengths is a spectral region called the near-infrared um, spectral region. Contrast this to say we're trying to map land surface temperature, well then we would have to use a detector which is sensitive to much longer wavelengths. So typically when mapping land surface temperature, you're going to have your detector sensitive to about 10 micrometers in terms of wavelengths. So we have these spectral regions and there's different detectors which are sensitive to different portions of this continuum of electromagnetic radiation. Um, so we've got the visible spectral region and then just beyond the visible spectral region is a spectral region called the near infrared spectral region. And infrared film actually gets into that near infrared spectral region. And then we have detectors sensitive to longer and longer wavelengths. So the mid infrared spectral region, and then the thermal or far infrared spectral region. So let's take for an example the detector called a silicon detector, which is in your digital camera. So your digital camera basically has a matrix of silicon detectors and each silicon detector is sensitive to about from um, 450 nanometers to about 1000 nanometers. And what we do is use a filter to filter out the three primary spectral regions that are the visible spectral regions. So what we do is filter out for one silicon detector so it only sees the blue spectral region. Another silicon detector is filtered so it only sees the green spectral region. And another is filtered so it only sees the red spectral region. And that's basically how your typical digital camera works where it has a silicon detector and the detector is sensitive to a wide range of wavelengths in the visible and near infrared spectral regions, but we use a filter so each detector is, sens is seeing only a narrow portion of these spectral regions. And most satellite sensors use a similar type of silicon detector and a similar type of filtering. So then we get the blue band, the green band, and the red band. Okay, so to demonstrate this, pull up the nanana.tiff raster for this week's data set and double click. So if we double click on it, 
you'll see there are six bands in this raster. And the first three bands are from the visible spectral region. So this is the blue band, the green band, and the red band. So we'll add band one, and then we'll add band two, and then we'll add band three. And then just rename these so they're renamed blue, green, and red. So band one is the blue. Band two is the green. And band three is the red. Okay, and in terms of the spectral response, these three visible spectral regions typically have a fairly similar spectral response. So, for example, if we turn on the blue band, we see the glacial Tanana River and the glacial Nanana River, and this is the town of Nanana, and then the Parks Highway is going up this ridge system. If we look at the green band, it's fairly similar, and if we look at the red band, it's fairly similar. Okay, in terms of vegetation, chlorophyll is absorbing in the blue and the red spectral region. So you would expect to see for an area that's vegetated, the red and the blue to have fairly similar display. However, the shorter the wavelength, the more the atmospheric scatter. So there's lots of atmospheric scatter in the blue spectral region and less atmospheric scatter in the red spectral region. So for example, that's why the sky is blue. Uh, there's much more scattering of the blue wavelength compared to the green or the red spectral region. So if we look at this red spectral band, we can see some good pattern of vegetation. And if we look at the blue, because of this atmospheric scatter, it's a much fuzzier image. So basically we have in this blue spectral region, lots of atmospheric scatter, and that adds to a fuzziness that we see in this image. So you might ask yourself, well, why even have a blue spectral region in an image? Well, there's several reasons. One is the blue spectral region transmits through water the best. So if you're interested in mapping, for example, underwater coral reefs or something like that, you would use the blue spectral region. Another reason is we can use the information from this blue spectral region to estimate atmospheric conditions. So basically using this blue band, we can estimate atmospheric conditions. And then the third reason is if we want to create a color image, we would use the three primary colors, our blue spectral region, our green spectral region, and our red spectral region. So that's the next thing we'll do is make a color image from these three spectral bands. So if we add this nanana.tiff, and then we can turn it on, and we'll zoom to layer. Right now, the red band is controlling the, the blue color, and the blue band is controlling the red color. So to make it look like a color photograph, we want band three, which is the red spectral region, to control the red color. And we want band one, which is the blue spectral region, to control the blue video intensity. So then we get what looks like a color photograph. So this image was taken in the autumn in September. So these south facing slopes are aspen stands and they're turning yellow. And this area here is a bog area, which lots of uh, vaccinium that's turning red. So basically we have an autumn color in this image. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, there's a question there that will, when you answer it correctly, give you 